Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Connie Tomeno. Um, bon dia. For those of you in Brazil, I know this is a special time of year, and so it's my pleasure to um, talk to you about, about my experience in music therapy and also um, to say how thrilled I am that the field has expanded so much in the, in the past 42 years that I've been a music therapist. Um, of course, I started back in the, 19, the late 1970s, and my background is interesting. I talk about this a lot. I'm, I'm, my background was in both science and music, and it was my interest in science that influenced how I perceived the responses of the patients I worked with in music therapy. So people with uh, dementia, people who had cognitive impairment, who were otherwise non-responsive, became so responsive uh, to music that I needed to understand why somebody with, with such a damaged brain um, could, their brain could process sound as, as a familiar song. And so this really led me on a, on a huge exploration over these 42 years on what it is about music that affects us neurologically and what do we know about music in the brain that allows us to understand how and why music therapy is so effective in treating, not only treating people, but helping um, a child develop a function, helping a person enhance their quality of life, ha helping with trauma and some of the psychological issues that we deal with in music therapy as well. And so over these years, um, and working alongside Dr. Oliver Sacks, uh, we've explored those and, and worked with neuroscientists and other people to help us understand better what it is about music and how we can develop more effective music therapy treatments to help this. So one of the most fortunate things in my life, I could say for sure, was, was meeting Dr. Sachs in 1980 when I became the music therapist at Beth Abraham Hospital in, in New York City in the Bronx, where he had worked with the people that he wrote about in his book, Awakenings. And so those patients became, became my patients. And although they were toward the end of their life at that point, um, they were still fully responsive to music. And because of that, um, he very much uh, depended on me to explain and show him their responses within music therapy so he could help um, them understand his evaluations and what he needed to do to help them both with the medication they were on or changing some of the rehabilitation that they were receiving. And then also, uh, we spoke a lot about, about music and cognition and some of the underlying mechanisms that music affects. And back in the 80s, we tried to um, get the neuroscientists to help us study music and the brain. And in the 80s, there was very little uh, technology available to do that effectively. And so we, we did clinical studies, um, and he observed a lot of the work that I was doing. And then those studies and that those clinical protocols that we developed, uh, we received funding for to help uh, expand even more so. So by uh, the early um, 19, 1900s, not 1900s, um, 1993 and 1996, we received funding to help us develop those protocols. And so over the years, I've been training music therapists and working with in incredible colleagues uh, to expand how people can use those interventions the most effectively. And these days, I, I find myself uh, training other people, uh, people who work uh, in facilities where they may not have music therapists and how can those people know some of the nuances of music so they can help a physical therapist or, or a client um, use music more effectively. And then I'm working with some technology companies now too to help take some of the best practices or best information we have about music cueing to enhance motor function and communication skills in people with things like uh, Parkinson's disease and stroke rehabilitation and early onset dementia and other types of, of issues like that. So it's been an incredible journey for me because uh, 
where I used to have to explain what music therapy is. Uh, nowadays, I have people saying, I'm so excited that you're a music therapist. I want to know all about it. So I'm hoping it's like that in Brazil. I know that there's so many wonderful clinicians there, so many colleagues and friends. I, I visited there to present at the conference several years back, and so wonderful colleagues who are doing very great work. And I'm always happy to collaborate and to teach, even if it's remotely, to um, help share this knowledge and enthusiasm for what a great field we have and how fortunate we are to be in a field that's now being recognized as an essential, as an essential service in not only rehabilitative, rehabilitative medicine, but uh, of course in psychology, and more importantly in early childhood development and uh, functional integration of, of sensory systems in young children. So we're really at a crossroad in the field, and I hope uh, we expand even further to become um, a large profession in the coming years. So congratulations on your events. I know this is a, an important time of year, and uh, look forward to staying in touch and communicating with all of you. Bye, and thank you.